Yo tech leads, I'm Cobra, and when it comes to the current state of the mobile tech world, there aren't many significant features that manufacturers really implement to separate themselves from the pack. The elimination of the notch is one of those problems that aren't really problems that some of these companies have been working on with the addition of cutouts and the pop-up selfie camera. Asus uses this idea of the peekaboo selfie camera and takes it to the next level. If you're only using one camera at a time, then you might as well use the best camera on the phone, right? The Zenfone 6 flips its 48 megapixel rear camera to the front for your highest quality selfie or vlogging needs. Now this isn't the only reason to get this phone, but it may be the primary one. We'll come back to the camera in a few. Holding this phone is like shaking a hand at a T800 from 1984's The Terminator, even down to Asus's traditional Skynet-like font. This phone is big, heavy, cold, functional, and industrial like a tank. The Terminator similarities stop in the durability department. It adopts the trendy but breakable glass back with a hopefully not soon to be obsolete rear fingerprint scanner. There's no water or dust resistance. And of course the ever concerning mechanical components that enable that standout flip function. My hand has unintentionally obstructed the rotation of the camera on more than one occasion, which has led to it stopping in place, which requires manual closure. I've had a few camera cannot operate properly warnings since then, but nothing a few presses of the on-screen flip button can't fix. Yeah, this is something that I'm definitely worried about down the line. It does have a smart button that is semi-customizable, which I use to open a camera, as a shutter key, double click it for the flashlight, and as a way to quickly take screenshots by a long press. I'll take limited functionality over a dedicated smart key any day. The Z6, which it is known by in some markets, also has stereo speakers that can get loud but lacks true depth and richness. It has an outdoor mode that significantly increases the volume, but it's at the expense of sound quality yet again. The device does include the elusive headphone jack with the welcome included software equalizer called Audio Wizard. And it also has an FM tuner that surprisingly had great radio reception. This latest iteration of Zen UI should be called Stock Android Living in Zen. Any Pixel fan will feel right at home as they kept the user interface as clean and as straightforward as Android was intended. Yeah, Asus brings in a few of its own apps like Gallery and File Manager, but it's kept to a minimum, at least on this global version. You can expect general speed when playing graphic intensive games and even rendering 4K video, thanks to the Snapdragon 855. I shot, edited, rendered, and uploaded a video all on this phone without any trouble. That link will be in the description if you're interested. But there were times that the software got a little buggy. Auto rotation doesn't want to respond when prompted, split screen multitasking gets a bit stubborn at times, and auto dimming is super aggressive. I find myself frequently brightening the display. Sorry for the constant personification of the Z6, but I can't shake that Terminator reference. Since we're talking about the display, it's big, beautiful, minimally bezeled 6.4 1080p LCD. Now, say what you want about LCD versus AMOLED, but I'll tell you what, this screen rivals the critically praised best of them. I strongly stand behind OLED having the best picture and motion quality when it comes to televisions, but after placing this phone directly next to another, more expensive device, I can barely tell the difference, if any at all. All right, I know you're also curious about this circus act of a camera. Now it uses the Sony blah, blah, blah sensor with that F.1 blah aperture with EIS and blah, 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 blah. I'll link to the specs in the description. I care about the performance and this camera is fun, feature filled and phenomenal. The fun starts with that flippy thing and the unique thingy things that you can do with it. The Samsung A80 has a similar action, but Asus tries to highlight that party trick with style. Besides your standard photo, portrait, night, and yes, pro mode for photography, this phone includes the automatic panorama mode that works with the push of a button to start and to stop without moving your hand at all. That's pretty cool. You could also take a picture with the camera in any position, but I haven't found a practical use for that besides taking like spy photos of Big Head. But the fun doesn't stop with photos. 
In addition to a limited 4K60, videos are enhanced with time lapse, slow mo that can shoot 720 at 480 frames per second to 1080 at 240, and a motion traction mode that isn't perfect. It makes a slight buzzing sound, but with the right application can be very effective. I can't think of another phone that offers a feature like this. If you can, let me know in the comments. Now having such a robust set of camera options wouldn't be worth a thing if the camera itself was basura, or in other words, trash. It has a dual setup with the primary camera having a laser autofocus and the secondary with an ultra wide lens. Now I love the picture and video quality the Z6 produces and is very comparable to similarly priced Google Pixel 3a. As I tested the Pixel, I brought the Z6 along for the ride to go shot for shot and you know the results were pleasing. But where this phone obviously stands out is its strength in the front facing department. Where most phones have less impressive selfie performance, this phone uses its powerful rear camera to put in that double duty work. Now the photographer and anyone else in the frame can see where and how they look before snapping the shot. I mean, this is absolutely brilliant to me. So go get your 4K vlog on and don't worry about the lack of optical stabilization or the battery dying on you with its massive 5,000 milliamp battery. Man, no wonder this phone's so heavy, you know? Everyone's usage is different, but I can tell you after using this phone and constantly shooting, streaming, and even trying to game, for the culture of course, I had no problem making it to the end of the day. Now it does come with an 18 watt quick charge 4 adapter, but no wireless charging capability. Now it helps that I didn't have to charge it very often, but I do love the convenience of Qi charging. It also comes with a clear case and a wired set of headphones, and best of all, it comes with a $499 price tag. You get a whole lot for that price, especially when you think long and hard about what you really need and want in a phone. The Asus Zenfone 6 is far from perfect, but if you're looking for something fun, quality, relatively lower priced, and finally different in the mobile space, then you might want to take a look at this one. Hey, don't forget, Cobra told you. Hey, thanks for watching.